In this video, we're going to continue talking about how to do problems with projectile motion. Again, it would be valuable if you reviewed the discussion of projectile motion and projectile motion basics, particularly the formulas that are at the end of it. In this video, we want to continue talking about two kinds of projectile motion problems. One is an object is launched at an angle, and the other is an object is launched horizontally. In projectile motion sample problems part one, we did a problem where an object was launched horizontally. Now we're going to try a problem where the projectile is launched at an angle. So what's different about solving problems where the object is launched at an angle? Well, once again, if you have an object launched with a certain initial velocity that makes a certain angle with the ground, uh, this initial velocity has two components. The initial velocity, some of this is horizontal and some of it's vertical, so we can divide the initial velocity into two components, v initial x, that's the horizontal component, and v initial y, that's the vertical component. Now in the first kind of problem that we did, the angle was basically zero, so v initial uh, x was v initial and v initial y was zero. But now that's not going to be true. Now we're going to have both a v initial y or v initial x and a v initial y because we are launching at an angle. So what we're going to have to do is use trigonometry because we are going to need v initial x and v initial y. So v initial x is going to equal v initial and because v initial x is adjacent to the angle we're going to use cosine of theta and v initial y will equal v initial and because v initial y is opposite the angle we're going to use sine of theta. So when we use the same kind of formulas that we used with object launched horizontally when we have v initial x and v initial y we're going to have to make these substitutions. So usually what you're going to do is figure these numbers out before finishing the problem. All right, let's try this problem. A famous motorcyclist, who will remain nameless, plans to jump across a canyon 3.5 kilometers wide. He plans to use a 30-degree ramp and leave it moving at 196 meters per second. And of course the question is, will he make it? So first of all, what I'm going to do is I want to figure out the initial uh, horizontal component and the initial vertical component. Uh, but to do that, before I even get into that, let's, let's make a little drawing. So here's V initial. It's 196 meters per second. And here's kind of the bottom of the ramp. And we said that's 30 degrees. So the V initial X is the horizontal part of the 196. And V initial Y is the vertical part. And that the fir our first job is to figure these two out so we can use them in the formulas. So let's do V initial X, which is equal to V initial cosine theta. So V initial is 196 meters per second times the cosine of 30 degrees. So I get out my trusty calculator and I find that V initial X is 170 meters per second. And V initial Y is going to equal V initial sine theta, which is going to be 196 meters per second, sine 30 degrees, which is going to be 98 meters per second. So what this tells me is that if you leave a 30 degree ramp at 196 meters per second, you will be making progress horizontally at 170 meters per second and you'll be actually going up at 98 meters per second. Well, as I start to think about the problem, let me write down my two basic equations. So horizontally, I'm going to have x equals v initial x, the x component of the initial velocity, which I actually just figured out, times time, plus 1 half times the acceleration in the x direction times time squared, and if you remember from before, there is no acceleration in the x direction. Gravity just acts vertically. The, 
the motorcyclist will move at a constant velocity horizontally. So that means that the bottom line here is going to be x is just going to be v initial x, initial component, the x component of the initial velocity times time in the air. The y formula looks similar. The, this would be the height that he gets, so this is his progress vertically, equals v initial y, y component initial velocity, which I just figured out, t plus one half times the acceleration in the y direction times time squared. Now here I realize that the acceleration in the y direction is the acceleration due to gravity. Now I have to worry about the sign that I put uh, acceleration due to gravity with because if y is going to increase upwards, gravity is downwards. So then I would put negative g in here, which is what I'm going to do in this case. But if I started already up and things were moving down, so that y increased going down, then I could just have this just be positive g. So in our case, uh, y is going to be positive going upwards, so I have to put negative g in here. So I'm going to have y equals v initial y times time minus one-half gt squared. So now I've written all this stuff down, and now it's time to think about what they asked me. And what they asked me is, given a certain speed off a ramp and how wide the canyon is, will he make it? So I have to think about what of all these letters on this screen is a will he make it letter. So will he make it means will he go three and a half kilometers. Well, three and a half kilometers would be an x. So what I want to do is solve this problem solve for x. And if x is at least three and a half kilometers, then the answer is yes, he does. If it's less than three and a half kilometers, then the answer is no, he doesn't. So I look at this formula and ask myself, what do I need to know to get x? And the answer is I need to know two things. V initial x, which I actually just figured out, the x component of the initial velocity, it's 170 meters per second. And I need to know t, which is going to stand for how long is he in the air? So I am going to use this formula to figure out how long he's in the air. And then I will multiply it by 170 meters per second that I already figured out and see what I get. So what I need to do is figure out how long our famous motorcyclist is in the air. And we're actually going to get that number two ways. Not one, but two ways. And the first way we're going to do it is we are going to use this formula. Now this formula will allow me to know at what time I am at any height I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask this formula at what time the height is zero. Why am I going to do that? Because the amount of time he's in the air is the amount of time it takes for him to take off, go through the air, and land back on the ground. The ground is y equals zero. So if you want to know how long is he in the air, what you really want to know is when does he get back down to the ground, which is zero. So I'm going to put in zero, and then I'm going to solve this for time. So I put 0 equals v initial y times t minus 1 half gt squared. So I have this term minus this term equals 0. Well, if I have two things and when I subtract them I get 0, that means the two things are equal to each other. So v initial y t must equal 1 half gt squared. And I notice that I have t's on both sides, so I can divide both sides by t, and that'll get rid of the t on the left completely, and it will only leave one of them on the right, so I'm going to have this. And so now it's just a matter of uh, doing the algebra to solve for this t. So now my job is to get t by itself. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 
and that will get rid of the one half over here. So I'm going to have two times v initial y equals gt, and then I divide both sides by g. And that equals the time. So now what I'm going to do is put in the numbers that I got before. So two, v initial y was 98 meters per second. So if you rewind a little bit, you can see that. Divided by 9.8 meters per second squared, which is the acceleration due to gravity. And if I do that in my calculator, I get 20 seconds he's in the air. So what I actually did is I asked the formula, uh, at what time will y equal 0? And the answer was 20 seconds later, he'll be on the ground again. Now at this point I really have all that I need to solve the problem, but just for purposes of showing you something that would be valuable for you in the future, let's figure out how long he's going to be in the air another way. And that way is based on remembering that V initial Y is equal 98 meters per second. What that means is that vertically his initial speed is 98 meters per second, and as we know, as he goes up in the air, this number is going to decrease, and it's going to decrease at a rate of 9.8 meters per second every second. So one thing I could do is ask the question, how long will it take for him to get to the highest point? And to do that, what I would use is formula on the reference tables, acceleration is change in velocity with time, while the acceleration is... 9.8, so I can actually put that in. So I can say that 9.8 meters per second squared, the change in velocity is going to be a 98 meters per second because the initial speed is going to be 98, but at its highest point, the, nine, the final speed is zero at the highest point. So if I solve this formula for time, I will find out that it takes 10 seconds to get to the highest point. Well, if it takes 10 seconds to get to the highest point, then it's going to take another 10 seconds to get all the way down if the other side of the canyon is at the same level as the first side. So the way down will take another 10 seconds. So altogether, he'll be in the air for 20 seconds, which is the same answer I got before. So now I'm ready to find out, will he make it? So will he make it is an X question. I know he's got to go 3.5 kilometers. And from way back when our horizontal formula, which is what I want to know, is how far is he going to go horizontally, is X equals X component of the initial velocity times time. So X, the initial velocity in the X direction we found out was 170 meters per second. And t is how long he's in the air, which we just figured out two ways is 20 seconds. So all together, we get 3,400 meters. Now that, there is 1,000 meters in a kilometer. So this is 3.4 kilometers so he goes 3.4 kilometers, but he had to go 3.5 kilometers. So the answer, will he make it, is no. All right, now it's your turn. So try this problem and show me the solution when you come back to class. A projectile is fired at an angle of 53 degrees with the horizontal. The speed of the projectile is 200 meters per second. Calculate, first, the time that the projectile remains in the air, and second, the horizontal distance that the projectile travels.